Do you have trouble swallowing? Every year, one in 25 adults will experience a swallowing problem in the U.S. Difficulty could lead to serious health issues. This morning, we're learning more about identifying and managing swallowing problems with Joanne Oshiro, speech language swallowing pathologist at the Queen's Medical Center. Good morning. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yes. Now, it's something that some of us might not even think about, might even take for granted, but what is involved in swallowing? That's a real, the answer to that is just something that people don't always think about because we do swallowing every day, 100 times a day, mm -hmm. as you know, and until something goes wrong, we don't really realize, oh, what's, what everything is that happens. Um, but most people understand swallowing to be a mechanical um, process. You chew, put the food in your mouth, you chew it, you swallow it, it goes down your food pipe or your esophagus and it goes into your stomach for mm -hmm. digestion, which usually happens until it doesn't. And it involves energy, it involves you to be alert. I mean, you don't think of yeah. these things, these mental things. Yeah, there's that part of it as well. A level of alertness, how awake you are, can you follow directions, do you understand what's going on? So what could cause problems in this area? So there's several things. There are some things that are progressive or some things that happen all of a sudden. There are also some things that are temporary and then some that are more long-term and lifelong. So some of those things can be um, disease, accident, injury, so if, if part of your structures are damaged, the structures mm -hmm. themselves get damaged, um, illness, uh, any, as the disease I was saying could be possibly head or neck cancer, mm. um, anything to do with the esophagus, sometimes normal aging because the structures slow down, um, they get weaker, so we can't eat as fast. Other things that can involve um, the swallowing would be just, just your lifestyle choices, how fast you eat, the things you eat, even medication. Medications can because you can get dry mouth mm -hmm. and that can mm -hmm. affect things. So that's the physical part of the swallowing. Now the other thing that can change would be the person himself or herself. As we said, level of alertness, awakeness, just awareness, um, and just energy level. And what are some of the concerns? Concerns can be if you don't eat enough, obviously. If you're coughing and choking, you don't eat enough. There can be um, malnutrition dehydration and there's a host of um, medical things that can go wrong when you're dehydrated. Also, um, you can take things instead of your stomach into your lungs, which can lead to lung infections such as pneumonia. If you have enough of those or at least one of those, you can end up with scarring in your lungs that stays for, a, that just stays there. And then anything that happens after that to you lung-wise, mm -hmm. you can be in more, prob more problems because you have trouble bouncing back. You have less wow. lung real estate. Also, besides that, there's the social issue that's involved. If you don't eat or you can't eat or you're coughing and you're choking every time you do, mm -hmm. then you start to tuck yourself away. You don't want to go out and be with people. You don't want to eat out in restaurants. People are scared right. every time you cough or it's, it's a good point. scary to the restaurant. Yes. So they become isolated and, very, and, and can be on the road to depression. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's such serious. a social thing, especially in Hawaii. Yeah, so it's a health-related issue as well as a social issue. So what can people do? You brought a device here. I did. So some things that we can do. Here's one type of treatment that we can do. This is a um, more for if there's muscular weakness. This is called a neuromuscular electrical stimulation unit. Okay. We um, take this from the physical therapist. If anybody had ever had physical therapy in the past, you understand maybe what a TENS unit is. This is similar to that. This is a very refined unit, it's FDA approved, and it's specifically made for the throat area. So what this unit does, it, we call it neuromuscular electrical stim, so neuro is nerves, muscular is muscle. Mm -hmm. These are tiny units that are placed on the throat area, and we uh, put some electrical stimulation that helps the nerves talk to the muscles to tell them to, to squeeze harder and stronger so that everything goes where it should and nothing goes where it shouldn't. So that device can do all that? It can in conjunction with direct swallowing therapy. So while you're on the machine, we have you eat, we have you drink. There's different strategies and techniques we can teach you. Because a lot of times people think, I don't want to go for swallowing therapy or I don't want to be seen by anybody because you're going to, number one, take food away from me. Or number two, you're going to make me drink really thick sludge uh, that, no I've seen, that I've seen my right. auntie drink, my uncle drink. I don't want that. But that, that's not necessarily the, the outcome of anything.
Okay, now to learn more about swallowing issues, including the signs of swallowing problems, treatment options, and the difference between normal versus abnormal swallow, join Joanna Shiro for Queen's free speaking of health lecture called The Trouble with Swallowing Causes Risks and How to Find Relief. That's happening this Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. at the Queen's Medical Center Punch Bowl. Now to register, call 691-7117 or go to www.queens.org. Slash events. Thank you once again, Joanne, for being here. Thank you.